Hi Vaishnavi, good morning. Uh, can you hear me? So is there anyone who only enrolled for SQL? I mean, without completing Excel? No? Okay, then everyone completed Excel. That's nice. Online participants, uh, do you have idea on Excel? Okay, so why I'm asking this question? Very simple. Why SQL? Yeah, the same question. Maybe I don't know whether Kishore asked you or not. Why Excel? But let me ask the question why SQL? Why do we use SQL, guys? Let me rephrase my question. Sorry? It's a programming language. Okay. So, what is the use of it? To store the data in a database. Sorry, uh, I think Vaishnavi, you said something I didn't hear. Can you please say it again? Yes, yeah, sir. To store the data in a database, sir. To store the data in a database. Thank you so much. That's correct. To store the data in a database. And let me add our friend's point. That is to retrieve the data from a database. Is that what you're saying, sir? Okay. But now let me ask you a couple of questions, guys. I mean, this is like a very common question which I ask. Why do we use Excel? Thank you so much. To store data for calculation purpose. Okay, I'll go with these two points. So now my question is, when you are able to store the data in Excel, why are we bringing the database concept here? Am I clear with my question? Yeah, so we used Microsoft Excel 
for example, uh, let me come here. There is some data here. We have some data. Now I can store my data in Excel. Why are we moving out of Excel and why are we trying to getting into uh, get into another application? Store more than Excel. More than Excel. What do you mean by more than Excel, sir? Okay. So even in Excel, I can store good amount of data. Because in Excel, we have like 10 lakh 48,576 rows in a sheet. So we can store almost like 10 lakh rows of data in Excel. So why are we moving out of Excel and why are we trying to use a different application to store the data? Am I clear? Hope I'm not confusing anyone. Have you ever thought of it? Yeah. Also, let me bring up two more words, guys. Even this is the same question which I ask. Can somebody tell me the difference between server, database, and table? People who already know the answer, please, I request you to keep quiet because some of you already attended this. Am I clear? So these are the words which we use very frequent, guys. We use server, we use database, and we use table for all. Can somebody tell me what is the difference between a server, a database, and a table? Because when I first learned SQL, guys, for me, this was very confusing. I'm assuming most of you are coming from non technical background. Yeah, I don't know how many of you are from technical background. I'm assuming most of you are from non technical background. That's the reason why I'm just trying to understand what is the difference between server, a database, and a table. And when we can store data in Excel itself, why are we using a different application? to keep the data in a structured format in a table. Then even if you come to Excel, for example, let me come to this part. So even here, we have the data in table format only. In Excel, we have to uh, set the data in a table format, but in SQL, we'll already have the data in itself as a table. Excel have a table and sorry, you mean to say that uh, in SQL, we have the table already. Yeah, table format. Can you please Oh,
sorry, let's continue. So now even here, we stored the data guys and the data, even if, if you upload this, we kept respective headers and under the header, we kept the respective data. Here. So we are able to store the data here. Why physically we are trying to store it in a database and why are we trying to use it? That's not my question. Hope I'm not confusing anyone. Any, any thoughts guys, what do you think? So if I come here, I'm repeating this again. So we can store data and we can perform calculations in Excel. Now my question is, we are leaving Excel and we are moving to other application. Why we are going to a different application? And if we go to a different application, what are the advantages we have? And should we really have to learn this? Any thoughts? The data in Excel stores as a file format, but the data in the database can be stored in the server. Stored in the server. Yeah. So what is the advantage if I store it in a server? Whenever we want the data, we can retrieve from the server. So whenever we want data, we can retrieve. So can't we do that in Excel? Yeah, we can do, but if the file gets deleted, then I think so we can't get it back. Yeah, absolutely true. So now let me bring up a word here, guys. Very important word, data security. Yeah, now this is one more question what I have. For example, let's say I got this Excel file, guys. Yeah, can I open it and can I see the data? Yes. Yeah, so uh, somehow I got this file. Maybe I hacked the system or whatever I've done. I got this system, uh, sorry, I got this Excel file. Yeah, ethically or unethically, whatever it is, I got this file. My question is quite simple. If I get this file, can I open it or not? Yes. So is your data secure? No, absolutely. So. Anyone, whoever go, get this file, they can open this file and they can see the data. So let's imagine a scenario wherein nobody likes to display their bank balance. Am I correct? Very sensitive information. Now the same way, so here what I'm doing is, for example, let's say, uh, all these are my different, different clients. Let's imagine. And let's imagine uh, the annual salary column, let's imagine their bank balance. Now, if somebody gets this file, they can find out who are my uh, customers and what's their bank balance is your data secure no. no and so i'm just talking about one simple step but what if you imagine a scenario of a company company will have so much of uh, sensitive information and they have to store the data very secure and even when somebody is trying to access the data there should be a proper structure security that's what these days many people are complaining like my uh, Insta account hacked, somebody uh, kept some wrong postings. So we see so many things, right? Even the celebrities coming out and they're announcing it. Yeah, and even we have a scam on uh, Facebook or WhatsApp. People are requesting for money. So what people are doing, they are misusing it. Now, so we are capturing so much of data and we are trying to store it. Yeah, this is the example which generally I give to every session, guys. I love this example. Can I be technical? So I give it to every batch the same example. So one of my family members used to work with a bank, guys. Yeah, long back, not now. So somewhere in around in the 1970s where computers were not introduced in banks. Yeah, he used to, I love this example. If they wanted to withdraw cash, you know, to withdraw the cash, they used to wait almost like five days to seven days. But now these days, are we waiting for five to seven days? No, right? We just go to ATM and we withdraw the cash. But you know, in those days, the biggest problem is they used to maintain the customer data, but everything was stored in books. Yeah. So you need to go to the only branch where you have your account because your information will be stored only in that branch. Let's imagine you are you move to a different city and you are trying to make withdrawal of cash. 
In that case, you go to a bank, you submit a request. That request will be sent to the home branch. So they get information. Now here the books have to be updated. Even they have to find out your details. So they used to take their own time. Then they used to respond to the requested branch. Then they will respond. Now these guys have to update their books. So finally they used to give the cash. So this entire process, so it used to be very lengthy. Hope you guys can understand this. Now, if the same scenario now, do we like that experience? Absolutely not. Yeah, here, if you store the data in books, that's really nice. But the problem is, if you want to find for a particular information, is it easy if you store the data in books? It's really difficult. So that's what our friend is mentioning. We call that as retrieval, guys. I'm trying to retrieve some data. Already I stored it, but I'm trying to retrieve the data. Then if I want to retrieve it, I have to waste a lot of time. If it is not structured. Then the second thing, biggest problem, if I want to store data, for example, let's say, I ask you to share your details. Everyone will share their details in their own way. Somebody writes name first, then somebody writes their mail ID, somebody writes their phone number. Then the other person, what they do is they write uh, name first, then phone number, then mail ID. Is it organized? No, because you are trying to collect the data, but you're not collecting in organized. Then it will be really difficult, even retrieval and to store. So now, like our friend mentioned, whenever you want to store data, we store it in a structured format. That structured format we call as So basically, where are we storing data guys? In table. Am I clear with that point? Now, these tables should be stored at a specific location. That location is nothing but your database. And the databases where you store, we call that place as server. Am I clear now? So server is different, database is different, table is different. Basically, the data will be stored in tables. Those tables are stored in database and databases are stored in server. Yeah, I give a very generic example. For example, let's say I want to come to this room. In that case, I have to open the main door. Yeah, every home will have a main door. You open the main door, then you go to a specific room. The same way, if I want to access a table, first I need to connect to a particular server. Yeah, from server, we go to particular database. In a particular database, we come to a particular table. So in table, you will have information. For example, let's say somebody asked me. So basically, this is employees data, guys. They ask me how many female employees are there. Now, if I come to this table and if I operate my data from here, then I can find out that 266 female employees are there. Can you see? So we call this place as status bar. Can you see my cursor guys? We call this place as status bar. So what is it saying? It is showing the count. We applied a filter for that. It is showing the count. So total records, how many we have? Double one three seven. So out of double one three seven, 266 belong to female. So now we stored the data and as well, we were able to retrieve it very fast. Did it take long time? No, right? So we are able to retrieve. So now, here, we store the data in tables. Yeah. And when we store the data in tables, we write certain uh, queries. We call them as queries, guys. Basically, we write some commands. Those commands we call as queries. Using those queries, we will retrieve the data. That's what we are going to do. Now, to do all these things, you need to have one specific language. That language is nothing but SQL. Yeah, so we call that as SQL, guys. Can somebody tell me the full form? Structured query language. Good. Then can you tell me the meaning of SQL? I don't want the full form, guys. I want the meaning. We retrieve the data in a structure format by using the queries. By using a query? Yeah. Yeah, I'll give my own example, which is very simple. 
So this is the language we use to communicate with database. I'm not mentioning retrieval or store. I'm not mentioning anything else. Basically using this SQL, we communicate with database guys. But where is this database? In a server. So if you want to communicate with database, you need to communicate with server. So yeah, first we connect to server. From there, we communicate with database. In database, what do we have? Tables. tables. Now using the tables, we will store the data or we will retrieve the data. All those things comes here. But basically to communicate with the database, we are going to use a language. That language name is is SQL. So people call it as SQL or people call it as SQL, both are same guys. Yeah, but we have the colloquial language, right? The language which we use in our day-to-day -day life. So people call that as SQL. Don't get confused, both are same. Yeah, then can somebody tell me what is this? What is the meaning of SQL server? Confusing? Yeah, people use all these words. Even if you walk from Maitrivanam to Triple S in Mass, you see so many posters saying like SQL server, ADF, Azure. You might have seen so many things, right? So can somebody help me to understand what is SQL server? It's an application, sir. Then uh, what is SQL? And why do we use SQL server? Too many questions? Yeah, let me explain this. So we just discussed that we use a server to store the data. So why I'm saying like server we use to store data because in server we have the databases. And these databases contain stable. So basically, we are trying to store the data in server. Now, if these services are provided by Microsoft, we call that as SQL Server. Guys. Please remember this. This is the name of the application, like our friend mentioned. So <laughs> this is Microsoft application, guys. Basically, the servers serve services are provided by Microsoft. This is a Microsoft application. That is the reason I asked how many of you are coming from Excel background. Yeah, Excel, who wants that product guys? Microsoft, the same way, even the SQL server is the product of Microsoft. Yeah, even there is one more company by name Oracle. Yeah, we call that as Oracle server. So for any product, there will be different, different service providers. Now, Microsoft is one of the service provider. If they provide the service, we call that as SQL. Now, am I clear with the difference between SQL and SQL Server? This was very confusing for me, guys. I don't know the difference between SQL and SQL Server. So any session generally, I start with the same problem. So SQL is a language which we use to communicate. But SQL Server is an application, like our friend said, to store the data, to retrieve the data, we use SQL Server. Are we good now? Okay. Now, let me bring up one more word. Anyone heard, heard this word? SSMS. Yes? So what is this SSMS and what is the difference between SQL Server and SSMS? Yeah, first we should understand all. Sorry? It performs English and binary language. Which performs? SSMS? Okay. First of all, what is the meaning of SSMS? Yeah. You guys are too good. Thank you. SQL Server Management Studio. Yeah, now tell me the meaning now. 
Why do we use SQL Server Management Suite? What is the difference between SQL Server and SQL Server Management Suite? First, we must know all these things, guys. So it's a okay. guess. I think so. For managing the data, we use SSMS. Then what are we doing with server? Server is the uh, application where we uh, write our uh, queries. Uh. Where we write our queries, but we just discussed that we store tables or databases in server. Did we ever mention that we write queries on server? No. No. Is my question valid? Yes, sir. So, what is the difference between SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio? Okay, let me explain this. SQL Server is a service provided by Microsoft. We just discussed that. But now, to communicate with the server, we are using SQL. But now we need one place to write our query steps. That place is nothing but your SQL Server Management Studio. Yeah. If I speak in technical language, we call this as IDE. Integrated Development Environment. Yeah. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Now, some of you might be thinking, what is this IDE? Now, like our friend mentioned, what you are going to do is using SQL, you are going to write your query. Yeah, that query looks like pretty simple English, guys. But how a machine will be able to understand your English query? Somebody has to do the translation job. Yeah, you might have seen, especially when uh, PM comes or Rahul Gandhi comes to Telangana or Andhra, they'll have a translator. Yeah, because they speak in Hindi or other languages. Now, they keep a translator. The translator translates into local language. Now, the same thing here, guys. You are writing the query in SQL. Yeah. But this laptop or the machine, it understands only machine language. That is binary language. Now, the query language has to be translated to machine language. So, SSMS does that job, guys. It's like a mediator between you and server. So whenever you are going to write a query that you will write in SSMS and that query will be translated into machine language from there, it will perform all the operations. For example, let's say I'm learning Python. Yeah, even to write your Python, we use a specific interface. Yeah, for example, let's say how many of you heard VBA? Because some of you are coming from Excel, right? Anyone heard VBA? Yes, Visual Basic? For applications yeah that for automation purpose even in excel you can write the coding yeah now let me come here i open this excel if i want to write code i go to a different interface here by pressing alt f11 yeah now this is where i write my code this place we call as bb editor to write the code for excel we have a different interface guys this we call as bb editor the same way, so here we have, we are going to deal with server, that to SQL server we are going to deal with. To communicate with this, we are using one interface. That interface is nothing but SSM. Am I making sense? Any questions, guys? If it is not clear, please do let me know. Now, you guys know the difference between SQL, SQL server, and SSMS? Am I clear? Okay. Now, the next thing what we will do is, so for next couple of days, we are going to work on, uh, we will uh, learn how to write SQL queries. Okay. To do that, first, you need to have a server. What you guys need to do is, you need to go to Microsoft website and you need to download SQL server. Why are we doing this? Yeah. Generally, server is being maintained by different companies. You have to pull a chair with me. Okay. 
Hey, sorry, just give me a minute. here now if if you want to learn the query language guys so we should have the server but no company gives you their server to work guys yeah and also here let me talk about very one important thing that is read and write anyone has idea what is this read and write In SQL, we can only read. Okay. For example, now let me come to this Excel file. So do we have read and write access here? If I want to modify my data, can I modify? Yeah, we can modify, right? So here, basically, we have the uh, access as developer. Yes. So here, you can store data if you want. You can delete the data. If you want to modify, you can do that. We are not only able to see the data here, even you can modify the data. So now, even for server, we need to have the read and write access. To have this, what we are going to do is, you need to go to Microsoft website and you need to download SQL Server developer version. And please get it installed on your machines, guys. Yeah, whoever is having laptop, so please download SQL Server and install it on your machine. Second thing, to write this query, we need to have the SSMS interface also. Yeah, even it is available on uh, Microsoft website, you can download it and you can install. So now to continue the sessions, we need two things guys. One is we need SQL Server and we need SSMS. So please complete the installation of uh, these two applications. Then we will continue with the session. Any questions? No? Are we good? Okay. So I'll share the instructions files related to this. Using that, you can work, guys. But now, let me bring up two more words. Maybe whoever is coming from engineering background, you might have heard these two words. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes. I would say 99% would know this. Except you are coming from BA or, yeah, except you are coming from uh, BA, then you don't know anything. So maybe the people who are coming from uh, Bachelor of Arts may not know this, but even the science graduates, even BCom, BTEC, all these guys know this. Now, I don't want the full form, guys. Can somebody tell me what is the meaning of it? DBMS and RDBMS. And which one we use? Which one we use? Do we use DBMS or do we use RDBMS? RDBMS. We don't use DBMS. We use. What do we do with the DBMS? To? To store the data. Yes, sir. To manage the database. To store and manage. Retrieve the data. Perform different operations. Call the server, right? Sorry. Somebody said something. Perform different operations. To perform different operations. Okay. This is like another management word, guys. Yeah. Especially in management, we use specific words. The same way here, let me bring this word, database management. So now, if you take a company, guys, they will be dealing with these kinds of files. So many files will be there. Yeah. Now, if you want to store the data, you'll be using so many files. Now, all these files should be stored somewhere. Like I mentioned, for example, let me take the example of bank. Yeah. Bank will have customer's data. 
they will have their products data, they will have their transactions data. Now, if I take these three scenarios, I'm talking about three sources here. One is customer's data, second one is their products data, and third one is transactions data. Now, these three should be stored at somewhere, but we can't store as we like. So here, we follow certain rules that is nothing but your DBMS guys. Database management system. Yeah, I'll give you a very simple example. Let me come here. Like I mentioned earlier, I want to collect your details guys. I'll open this Excel and I'll give it to you. I asked you to enter the data. Can somebody tell me how do you enter the data? You want to enter your details, guys. How do you enter your details? Sorry? Type? Okay. For example, let's say I have my keyboard and I'm going to type it. What will I type first? Name? Okay. Sorry? Age? Let's not get into the complicated things. No age. Address? Okay. Contact details, contact details in the sense, can I say as mobile number? And can I say mail ID? But I have a question here. Did I ask you to create the headers? No, why are you creating the headers? So if you don't keep these headers, can't you store the data? We can, but that is not structured. Am I correct? So I never asked you to create the headers, but the moment I asked you to enter the details, you started with headers. Because one person entered the details, the rest of the people will follow the same. Isn't it like a database management? Am I clear? So that's like one table, but what if there are multiple tables like this? So we should know how to store all the tables. So here we have DBMS concept guys. But second thing, when there are multiple tables, one table should be connected with other table. Otherwise, you can't carry out your business transactions. Let me give a very simple example. I hope you guys, uh, I mean, everyone went to supermarkets. Yeah. If you go to supermarket, generally, if I want to purchase a product, first, we pick the product. Yeah. Now, you go to the billing counter and you scan it. Then you see the pricing information. Yeah, now how are you getting that? Because already we stored it. No? How do you get it then? Using barcode. So actually behind the barcode, we stored all the information already. Yeah, we stored it. So that is the reason the moment you scan your barcode, yeah, and you are able to do it. Now the second thing, they ask your mobile number. The moment you give your mobile number and let's say they created the thing. Yeah. Now your mobile number, I mean, based on your mobile number, all your transactions will be stored. Am I correct? Or for example, let me take the example of ATM guys. Yeah. You have your account, bank account. Then your bank account is connected with bank transactions table. Now both are two different systems. But if you create a connection between your bank account and bank transactions table, that is nothing but your RDBMS. We are creating a relationship. So if you don't have this relationship, you can't carry out any of your transactions. Yeah, I don't know how many of you faced it. I know you guys are quite young. You go to any bank, guys, if you want to raise request, they ask for one specific detail. Anyone knows what is that? For example, let's say I want to apply for internet banking. Account number, is that enough? Aadhaar, okay. They asked for one more specific word that is customer ID. Customer ID, yes. Why they ask for customer ID? Because all your details are stored under this. Now using this customer ID, they update your details in different, different tables. For example, let's say I want to make a fixed deposit. Then I have my balance in my savings account. Then using this customer ID, they link your savings account with a fixed deposit account. That is nothing but your RDBMS. 
Am I clear now? Yeah. Now here, let me bring two more words. Online transaction processing. Yeah. What is OLT? Online. Online analytical processing. Yes, that's correct. OLDP stands for Online Transaction Processing. And OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. I don't want to be full form. What is the difference between both of them? Okay. OLAP is Data Warehouse. That's a perfect answer. OLDP is what? Online transaction. You mean to say that your net banking account is OLDP? No. Data analytics warehouse. Then what are we doing with OLDP? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's come here, guys. We have two systems. One is called as OLDP and another one is called as OLDP. Okay. Let me ask a very simple question. How many of you booked train tickets? Everyone? Yeah. So if you go to a registration counter, sorry, reservation counter, you have to fill a form. Yeah. There you see the first field as train number. Now, this is what my question, guys. Why are they asking for train number? Sorry? Why not the description? Saying like for every train, we have the description layer, right? Name. So instead of name, they use number. Why? Sorry. According to the train number, timings are different. That's true. Name can be same. No, it's not possible, sir. How can you give the same name? Yeah, the names are like uh, Vande Bharat Express. That's like a common name. But even in that, you have each route. Each route, they give a separate name. But on the whole, they call that as Vande Bharat. But each route, they keep separate names. Yeah, now let me come here. Instead of description, guys, if you use the train number, then you can get the details very fast. Am I correct? Yeah. So now, whenever you want to do any transaction, rather than the text, we use the numbers a lot. I'll give a very simple example. I hope everyone completed intermediate or degree. Yes. The moment you join in a college, the first activity will be they will assign you roll numbers. Am I correct? Why do they, why do they use roll numbers instead of your Easy. If they want to take the attendance, they can easily take it. And you can avoid the duplication also. Maybe, like our friend mentioned, two students may have same name. Yeah. So now, to make the transaction easier, we are using numbers. That's where we have a concept of normalization, guys. Yeah. Let me show you a simple example here. Okay, so here I have three tables, guys. First table is employee table, and second table is department table. Okay, now let me read the headers what I have in employee table. So, can I call this as a structured format? Yes, no, yes. So, we kept the headings under the headings, we stored the respective information. Is it structured? Yes. Now, if you come here, the first header we have as employee ID. Second header is employee name. Third header is job ID. And fourth is department, salary, date of joining, manager. I don't know what is this form. Let's come, come here. We have gender. Then we have pan and we have location. Now, we have another table here. There is department table. So for each department, they assigned one ID here. So what is the department ID for accounts? 
20 per HR? 10. 10. 10. So for each department, they assign one ID. Now, if you see this here, we have a column of department here. Yeah. Did we use department name or did we use department ID? Department ID? ID. Yeah. So because using this department ID, you can fetch the information very easily, guys. For example, if you come here, we have the description of accounts and finance. Instead of typing entire thing like accounts and finance, if I simply say 20, I can make it faster. Yeah. When you store the data like this, we call as normalized data. We have another concept where denormalized data instead of yeah numbers. So here we, we are using the text. So this is denormalized text. Okay. Now you guys tell me if I won't want to do the transaction, should I use normalized data or should I use denormalized data? Normalized data. That's the reason in every supermarket you have barcode and even the train. Instead of using the train name, we are using train number. So basically, whenever you want to do transaction, guys, there we use OLTP. The reason why in OLTP, we maintain the normalized data. So to complete your transactions very fast, we use normalized data and that system is called as OLTP. But for reporting purpose, guys, like our friend mentioned, we are going to use a data warehouse. Yeah, from OLTP system, we move the entire data to another system. We call that as OLAP. Because in OLAP, the data will be in denormalized form. Please remember this, guys. Denormalized. Okay, let me give one more example here. Yeah, very simple question. If somebody asks you to give sales employees data, yeah, we can give the sales employees data in two ways. First way is, yeah, first way is you can come here and you can apply filter. Yeah, I hope everyone is familiar with the filter concept in Excel. Yeah, now let me expand this. And here, if I take 30, then this is sales employees data. How many sales employees we have? Six. Yeah, now as you are familiar that 30 belongs to sales, you can understand. But whatever, what about the people from outside? Can you expect them to understand 30 belongs to sales? No, right? So instead of that, when you are preparing a report, if you come here, if you select sales, and if you prepare a report like this, which one is easy to understand? Guys? Denormalized or normalized? Denormalized, right? So in reporting purpose, we use denormalized data. For transaction purpose, we use normalized data. So my point is quite simple. For transaction purpose, we will use OLD. For reporting purpose, we use OLA. Are we good now? Are we good now? Any questions? No? Yeah, generally I travel a lot, guys. That's the reason I book a lot of train tickets. Anybody booked train tickets uh, in between 11.15 to 11.45 in the midnight? Server down. Yeah, that's the best example, guys. Actually, that's not server down. What happens during the entire day from midnight 12 o'clock to Till night 11.15, all the transactions happen on IRCTC website on OLDP. <coughs> At 11.15 in the midnight, what they do is 
they keep the OLTP server down. They will not allow to make any new transactions. That entire data will be moved to OLTPS. That half an hour period that is moved entire data from OLTP to OLTP. Because for next day, they need to find out how many tickets are booked. Yeah, how much amount is collected. They have to publish some statistics. To do that, they can't use the OLTP server. Base. They need to use OLTP system. For that reason, every day, IRDP is asking. Am I clear? Same with banks also. Yeah, even you join with any MNC guys. This is formal activity. Every day, during certain time, they keep the server down for at least 10 to 15. Yeah, I guess you might have received uh, some messages from banks saying like systems will be down. Some notifications you receive, right? What they do is in those cases, they do the server maintenance. So whenever there is some activity related to this OLDP and OLAP, they inform the customers prior and they do all these activities. Are we good now? Any questions? No? Okay. So let's come here, guys. This entire folder will be shared with you. Okay. So in this folder, uh, this I mean this is the material related to SQL. You have all the files here. Now in this file, if you come to instruction files, the first file you see the instructions related to RDPS. Yeah. By name Edgar F. Cord, he is the person who uh, created some rules for RDBMS guys. There are thirteen rules. Yeah. If you go through these rules, you can find out the difference between DBMS and RDBMS. Generally, we maintain the data, but if it is to be called as RDBMS, it should comply all these 13 rules. Any DBMS which comply all these 13 rules, we call that as RDBMS. Yeah, I request everyone, please, to go through this. Because you get a fair understanding if you go through all these concepts. Okay, very important. So please go through that. Then, if you come back to the folder again, below to this, can you see SQL Server Setup and SQL Server Client Setup? So I'm going to share the links related to this in the WhatsApp group, guys. Please use those links to download SQL Server and SQL Server Client is nothing but SSR. Download both of them and keep it ready for Monday session. You see all the installation instructions in these two files. Okay. Can I move on? Any questions? No? Yeah. Uh, even let me mention the hardware requirements, guys. Make sure that you have minimum 4 GB RAM. And my request, please don't use HDD laptops. Make sure you are using SSD laptop. I'm not saying that you can't use, but if you use HDD, uh, it takes a lot of time to process it. So make sure you are using SSD box. Minimum 4 GB is required. If anyone is using below to that, so it will take a lot of time to process the request. When you write a query, if you want to execute it, it takes, it takes a long time to respond. And even SQL, we can manage it to some extent, but if you want to learn Power BI, so these are the system requirements. Minimum 4 GB RAM. It should be i3 latest processor or i5 or i7 should be there. Then even we must have SSD for power. HDD doesn't work, guys. If you have a HDD laptop, please change it. I mean, if you spare like 2000 rupees, uh, you can change the hard disk. It's just a disclaimer. I'm letting you know prior so that you will not have uh, issues with your systems. So then let's move on to the next concept. Can you see the header here? Yeah. What is the header we have, guys? TSQL yeah. concepts. Can somebody tell me what is this TSQL? Yeah. Sorry? Transaction SQL. What is the meaning of transaction SQL? Okay, let me give a very generic example. 
So we have two Telugu speaking states, Telangana and Andhra. Do we use the same language in both states? <coughs> Different, right? Yeah. So now, if you come here, on the whole, SQL is a language, guys. But in that, we have different, different versions. Okay. The version which we use to work with SQL Server, we call that as TSQL. The full form of TSQL is Transact SQL. The same way, you have MySQL. You have PLSQL. Yeah. So basically, SQL is a query language. In that, different, different versions we have, like TSQL, MySQL, PLSQL, guys. So basically, if you know one kind of Telugu, you can understand the other Telugu, right? I mean, for example, let's say you are born and brought up in Telangana. Can you understand the Andhra language? Yes. We feel a little difficulty. Some words will be a bit different here and there. But we can understand, right? The same way. So if you learn one kind of SQL, guys, even the other SQL, you can work. Almost like 70 to 80 percent, we have the same commands in all the versions, guys. But we have a difference where 20 to 30 percent, we have some difference, some keyword differences we have. For example, I give the best example. Uh, now, let me come here. We have some sales employees, right? Can you tell me what, uh, who has the highest salary? Yeah, if you see this here, the highest value is 2,850. And the name of the employee is Clay. Yeah, he has the highest salary. Now, I'm trying to find out, like, for highest three salaries. Who has the highest three salaries? First one is Blake. Second highest? Alan. Third one? Turner? Yeah, we have 1,500. The first highest salary is Blake. He has the salary of 2,850. Second highest salary is like Alan. He has 1,600. And the third highest is Turner. Now, if somebody asks you to get top three salaries, highest three salaries, if you are writing TSQL, guys, we say top. The command what we use there is top. But if you are using MySQL, there we use the word as limit. Yeah, we have these kind of differences. But on the whole, if you learn one kind of SQL, even you can work with other SQL. Then people will immediately ask me why there are so many versions here. No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, basically it's a Telugu word. But there are certain words which are limited to that particular region. Yeah. In other regions, people don't use the same word. But meaning is same. But they don't use the same word. So you can't use limit here because limit is not available in TC. So that you can use in my Can I? Okay. So now, if you are using SQL Server, guys, here we use T-SQL. Okay. If you are using MySQL Server, then we use MySQL. If you are using Oracle Server, guys, people use PLS. Depends on the server, we use the respective language. That makes you? Yeah. Then people will ask me one more question. That which server people use a lot? Is it Microsoft SQL Server or uh, Oracle Server or uh, MySQL Server? Which one people use a lot? My answer is quite simple, guys. Depends on the company's application, they use the server. For example, let's say x is there. So we use Microsoft products a lot. 
So if we use SQL Server as the database, then we can connect all other applications to SQL Server very easily. Am I correct? Yeah. But for example, let's say there is another organization where they are using Oracle applications a lot. In that case, SQL Server may not be properly compatible with the Oracle applications. There they use Oracle Server. So it depends on the company, people use different, different servers. Even few companies use SAP. I hope you guys might have heard SAP. Yeah, in SAP, we have data warehouse concepts. Yeah, people used to call that as SAP BW. Now people call that as SAP HANA. So depends on the need of company guys. They use different, different databases. Am I clear? Any questions? No? Any questions? No? Online participants? <laughs> Any questions we have? No? Okay. Then let me come back to this folder again. Let me open this T-SQL concepts. This is what I was mentioning, guys. TSQL, people write this as TSQL or with hyphen. Yeah, the full form is transaction SQL. So basically, there was a concept of Sybase. Actually, Sybase was there to interact with, this was the language which was used to communicate with servers. Then Microsoft acquired it. Now it is being called as transaction SQL. Yeah, TSQL adds some advanced features of SQL to make it more powerful, such as declared variables, transaction control, error and exception handling, string operations, and data type calls. So when you are trying to store data, we get into certain operations. Yes. You have all the functions related to this. All applications that communicate with SQL Server do so by sending T-SQL statements to the server. T-SQL queries include the select statement. So basically, we are going to work with select statements a lot. Yeah, let me come back here. If I come to SQL concepts. For people, whoever is looking for notes, you can use this file, guys. Whatever we have discussed so far, we have all the details. There should be some reference file, right? So you can use this reference file. The same concepts we have, but it, it is like more structured. I went in a different approach, but here you see them in a very structured way. What exactly a database? Now these days, no one is asking these kind of stupid questions, guys. Nobody is asking what is a database. Instead, they are directly asking you to write a query. But if you take the scenarios like olden days, people used to ask, what is the definition of database? Yeah, same like three idiots movie. So application part has become more important. So this is what I mentioned earlier. You can say it as SQL or you can call this as SQL. And here is the difference. SQL, it's just a language and this is a server provided by Microsoft. Then we have DBMS and we have the difference between RDBMS and DBMS. And advantages of SQL why we should use SQL. You have all the advantages here. Then the installation part. This link is pretty old, guys. Yeah, instead of this link, I'll share new link in the WhatsApp group. Please use that. For downloading the SQL server, once you download this, you need to install SQL Server Management Studio also. Even this link is also very old. So instead of this, we will uh, give you a new link. So the moment you come for the session on Monday, make sure you don't have any issues in the installation process. If anyone has issue, already WhatsApp group is created. I hope you guys are part of that. If you run into any issue, please post it in the group. Yeah, mostly you will not have any issues in the installation process. So this is like alternate, but I don't suggest you to use this. This, we use it for exercise purpose, not for session purpose. 
So there is a website called WC Disputes. You can practice SQL from here. The reason why we are proposing this, whoever is using Office laptop, if you want to install SQL Server, you need to take permission from your ITB. Few companies, they don't allow you to do that. So to avoid that issue, you can use this interface to practice this. If anybody is using Office laptop, this is the alternate for you. Let's move on. So this is the nomenclature of database guys. Yeah, now if you see this here, we have a server. In a server, we have instances. How many instances we have here? Two. Can somebody tell me what's the difference between instance one and instance two? Are they same? Are, are, are they different? Different? What is the difference? What do we have in instance one? Three databases. Yeah. In instance two, only one. But which database you have? Database one. Yeah. Can you see this here? We have the database one in instance one and instance two. But why do we need the same database twice? Any idea, guys? And why do we maintain uh, instances? Is it really important? Let me ask you a very simple question. I'm using my laptop, right? So what if the laptop is crashed? Can I retrieve data? Yes, but there is a lot of process, right, sir? I need to go to, I need to do so many activities to retrieve my data. So the same problem here, I'm maintaining my data in database one. What if it is crashed? Happens, right? It is a system, it's a computer. So now I need to have the backup of my data. So what I'm doing here for the same database, I'm trying to keep one more instance. That is database one. This is just a replica guys. Why does it happen? I mean, two days back, we had very bad incident at Tabina, Kerala. Hope you guys know that. So now the entire uh, town has gone. Yeah, now the same problem. For example, let's say my data center is at one location. Due to some reason, maybe floods or whatever, there is some issue. So whatever the data I stored in that location, that's gone. I should have backup somewhere. Now, the same thing, guys. You take any company, they will have the data center at multiple places. The same data as a backup will be stored at multiple places. They are nothing but your instances. Yeah. For example, let's say State Bank of India is there. If they, one of their servers is down, can they say that uh, the server is down, we can't do the transactions? They can't, right? So they have to keep the alternate. So that's where they keep one more server ready and they will up the second server. So that's what we are doing. And also, let me come here. In any database, we have three layers, right? First one is physical layer, second one is logical layer, and third one is external layer. I'll explain these words in next session, but please remember that there are three layers. And if I scroll down, this is what we must know, guys. A database contains two files. First file is primary file, and second file is log file. What is the meaning of primary file? We discussed that we will store tables, right? All the tables are stored in primary data file. Then who logged into the database and how much time they spent, what kind of activities they performed, we maintain a tracker. That tracker is nothing but your log. 
Yeah, even in uh, Gmail also we have this activity. Am I correct? If you log into different system, you receive a notification from Google saying like somebody logs into your Gmail. We found a new login to your Google account. Can you check the activity? They'll give all the list. So this list is important, guys, because you are storing so much of data. Yeah. If somebody gets access to this database, they don't keep quiet. I have account in SBI. If I get State Bank of India database access, will I keep quiet? No, right? Imagine if you get data bank database access. How many will like that, guys? I love it because I can get into my account and I can increase my balance. I can modify my data, right? So here, that's the reason what they do is they take the maximum precautions. And along with that, they will find out who logged into the database, what kind of activities they perform. They keep track of everything. The reason why somebody gets into a particular table and they make modifications in the table, everybody should come to know that who made that change. That can be found out from log. In primary data file, again, we have so many options here. One is called tables, second one is called views, and third one is called indexes, and fourth one is phenomenon. So when we say tables, this is where we store all the information. Yeah, basically, read and write, whoever has read and write access, they will be able to access the tables. But if somebody is given read-only access, they will have access to views. Why views? Because here, we can't modify the data, but we can see the data. Same like the bank account. Can we modify the balance in the savings account? No, right? So here the same thing is. Whenever we want to prepare any reports, we will be given read-only access. Using that read-only access, we retrieve the data. Using the retrieved data, we prepare reports. Basically, we download the data. After downloading the data, we use different applications to work with that. Any questions? No? I'll talk about this index and synonyms. Maybe as we move on, we'll do this. Yeah, another boring concept. Yes, yes. Can somebody tell me what are all these things? Comment, sir. Yes. What is the meaning of DDL? What is the meaning of DML? What is the meaning of DQL, TCL, and DCL? So, in SQL, guys, we have five kinds of commands. Or the SQL language is divided into five parts. First part, we call as DDL. Data definition language. Second one is DML, data manipulation language. And third one, data query language. And fourth one, data control language. And fifth one, transaction control language. Now, I want meaning for each and everything. Can somebody help me to understand? DDL, what is the meaning of DDL? I'm not talking about DDLJ, guys. This DDL is totally different. Any idea? I can create data. We can modify the data. We can modify the data. Where do you modify the data? In DML, sir? Yes. Okay. And what do we do with DDL? Insert the data. Okay, let's come here. So DDL stands for data definition language. If you want to store the data, first you should have the table. If you don't have the table, how do you store the data? Is it possible? No, right? So here, basically in DDL, we create a table. We? No. Yes, guys, come on. Where do we have it? Yeah. Insert, rename, 
not exactly alter yeah we are on track please go ahead no not rank it yeah so this is data manipulation language guys under dml we have three commands one is create alter drop so we have different different objects here you can create a database or you can create a table or you can alter the database or you can alter the table you can drop the database drop is nothing but delete but there is a lot of difference between drop delete and truncate we will discuss that then. but these three are called as ddl commands in interview if somebody asks what are the ddl commands please mention create alter draw are we good yeah then we have data manipulation language when you already created a table what if if you want to modify the data there we go with dml languages so you can insert some records in the table you can update the records in the table or you can delete some records in the table so these are called as dml commands then i'll come to this dcl let me go to dcl what are the commands we have in dcl grant revoke so you grant access to someone you revoke access to someone and last one tcl transaction control language where you begin a transaction you commit a transaction or you roll back a transaction. Yes, this PDF is available, will be shared. You can go through this whenever you have questions. Okay, how many of you used uh, Book My Show? Everyone, I think that's the wrong question. Book my show or Red Bus. Yeah. So basically, using those platforms, we commit these transactions. I mean, we do the transactions. Now, what I do, let's come here. I go to Book My Show website and I wanted to book tickets in Triple S in Mass for a particular movie. So in that case, I open that Book My Show website, I select the movie, then I go to a particular screen, let's say screen one or screen two, whatever. Then I get the layout of the uh, screen. Am I correct? The seats layout. In that, I select one particular seat. Then I complete my transaction. Like I fill the details, customer name, and uh, I make the payment. All these things I do. Now, the moment I select it, what happens? The transaction will begin from there. The transaction will begin from there. If you make a payment, then the transaction will be complete. But what if, for some reason, the transaction was not done? Which I did not make my payment. Then, next second, can I book it again? I initiated a transaction, guys, but the payment failed. I couldn't do the payment. Now, my question is, in the next minute, can I book the same seat? No? No. One? Yes. Completed. Right? So now, here what happens? You initiated a transaction, but for some reasons, the transaction was not complete. So then, again, the transaction should be stopped and it should be released. The sheet, the seat must be released. So here, what we are doing is, we, are, we initiated a transaction. If the payment succeeded, then we commit the transaction. If the payment failed, we roll back the transaction, which means we allow others to book the same seat. That we call as rollback. So using TCL, transaction control language, basically it deals with transactions. You will write the queries, how to complete the transaction, how to initiate the transaction. Everyone might have checked your results on uh, websites, SSC result or intermediate or engineering. You enter your call ticket number, and you hit on search, then what happens? A transaction will begin there. Then it will communicate with the server. 
it gets the data, then that will publish the result. That is nothing but counting. Then you delete the hall ticket number, you enter somebody else hall ticket number, and you try to search back. That is nothing but road back. Am I clear now? So for all these things, every language has certain specific purpose. If you want to create table or modify table or drop table, they will use PDF file. If you want to, sorry, if you want to alter the data, alter is different, modify is different. So if you want to modify it, then we use PDF file. So here we have insert, update, and delete. Then we have DCL, where you grant access, where you revoke access. And we have DCL. Now let me come to the important one, that is DCL. So this is the command which we are going to focus for next 15, 20 days. It's like an honest statement. We are not going to cover DDL commands, DML commands, uh, DCL and TCL. As a reporting analyst or as a data analyst, we'll be focusing only on DQL part, which means how to retrieve the data we will focus on data query analysis. That's why we are going to write select statement. Yep. If anybody is looking for database administrator profile, then this is the wrong post. Because in database administrator profile, they'll be dealing with EDL a lot and DML a lot. But as a data analyst or as a reporting analyst, we'll be using DQL a lot. So that's the reason this course is specifically designed for DQL. Am I clear? <clears throat> because people ask me after the session, so can I apply for a DBA role? No. We are not going to focus on The focus will be on DQL, where when you are retrieving the data, how you can apply different filters, how you can get better result. Yeah. And instead of writing lengthy queries, how can you cut short your query? We are going to learn all these things in detail. Not DDL or DML or DCL or DC. Any questions? No? Okay. This we will discuss in next session. Yeah, very, very important concept. If you understand this concept, then if you understand one more important concept called constraints, then we are done with the basics guys. Then we can get into writing query. No questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can also use truncate. We can, but uh, first we need to discuss the difference between drop, truncate, and delete. We'll do that. Yeah, that's another important interview question. Difference between uh, delete and drop and uh, truncate and delete. Any other? Online participants, any question? <laughs> no? Then I'll share the links in the WhatsApp group, guys. Whoever hasn't completed the installation process, please complete SQL Server installation and SQL Server Management Studio installation. Yeah, once you complete this, then the rest of the things we'll discuss on Monday. That's it. I'll stop it here for today. We'll meet on Monday. Bye.